In physics, every force has a particle that carries it. The electromagnetic force is carried by light, or photons. The electromagnetic force keeps atoms glued together with a constant exchange of photons that bounce from the nucleus to its orbiting electrons. When light passes through atoms of interstellar gas, it can interfere with this exchange of photons and knock an electron out of its orbit. But only if the light has exactly the right amount of energy. The barcode of missing light tells you precisely how strong the electromagnetic force is. Over the last decade or so, there's been an amazing change in technology. One can now measure the things in distant astronomical objects more precisely than ever been measured on Earth. That provides a very strong motivation for uh, studying the early universe because we can measure what the conditions were like, we can measure what physics was like, whether the laws of physics there in very remote regions of the universe are the same as they are on Earth. That's pretty amazing. So John began searching the heavens for glowing clouds of gas billions of light years away. He used the Keck telescope in Hawaii to look at the northern sky, and the very large telescope in Chile, which looks out on the southern sky. And when he looked at his barcode, he discovered something totally unexpected. This is what a cloud of gas would look like if we were looking at it in the laboratory on Earth. When we look in the southern hemisphere, something slightly different. This line has moved towards the red end of the spectrum, and another line here has moved towards the blue end of the spectrum. So there's a change in the relative spacing of the spectral lines. It looks slightly different in the southern hemisphere. If you now go to the northern hemisphere, the exact opposite direction on the sky, this line has now shifted instead of to the right, to the left. And this line has shifted to the right instead of to the left. So the patterns now look different. It's a little bit as if you're in a supermarket, drunk, looking at the barcode, and the pattern has changed. These shifting barcodes can only be caused by one thing, something that seems impossible, a change in one of the fundamental laws of physics. When we first saw the results, it was hard to accept that they were correct. What we found is, when you look in one direction on the sky, the strength of the electromagnetic force appears to decrease with increasing distance from us. And when you look in exactly the opposite direction on the sky, the converse is true. The strength of electromagnetism seems to increase as you move to greater distance. Electromagnetism is the force that is transmitted by light. So if the strength of electromagnetism is not constant, it means that the properties of light itself are changing. If John Webb is right, he's overturned one of the basic laws of the universe. Once the laws of physics are allowed to vary in those equations, things have to be rewritten. So it's back to the drawing board for certain fundamental principles in physics. Could Einstein be wrong? Could the speed of light be different in different parts of the cosmos? On the other side of the world, one cosmologist is sure the answer is yes. He believes that light can move much faster than we think, and that out there in the universe, there are superhighways to the stars.